Nigel, in, the, in that snapshot of UK here on September 23rd, I believe you've just been over to Ireland. Yes, I have. I've been twice, actually. Uh, we've got this big referendum coming up on October the 2nd. Of the 27 member states of the EU, the only country that is getting a vote on this treaty is the Irish. And, of course, they voted in June last year. They said, no, we don't want it. But that, of course, wasn't good enough. And they were told by Mr Barroso and, and the European masters that they must do it all again. So we're playing quite an active role in this. Um, UKIP heads up a group in the European Parliament called the Europe of Freedom and Democracy Group. And we've produced a booklet, an eight-page booklet, which, through the Irish Post Office, has gone to every house in the country. And it's provoked a huge response uh, from the governing parties, Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael, condemning UKIP and condemning the leaflet. Uh, and we're the only ones in this referendum actually talking about the treaty, what it says and what it means. So it's been quite exciting. And what's the feedback in Ireland? You mentioned Ireland, because I, I remember my uncles had farms in the west coast of Ireland. I remember in the early 70s, in you know, mid 70s, suddenly they were not farming and not having to farm it. And mentioning the EU and uh, well, the feedback. I mean, look, when Ireland joined the EU, she was a very poor country and she's had an enormous amount of taxpayers' money over the last 35 years. Uh, but that's not the real reason that Ireland boomed. The real reason that Ireland boomed was they had a corporate tax rate of 12.5%. And because of that, you had American companies, British companies piling into Dublin. Than, you know, running back offices for city, for city trading companies and all the rest of it. That's the real reason that Ireland became a rich country. Uh, but the first big mistake for the Irish was joining the Euro. And they joined the Euro, and because of that, they got interest rates about half the level they should have been. So the property boom and collapse in Dublin has been far more spectacular than it's been in Britain. So the good times are over. And now with the EU expanding, taking in countries like Romania and talking in the future, about countries like Turkey joining, um, it's estimated that the Irish will start having to pay to be in the EU by 2013. So all these things are rather concentrating the mind, shall we say. OK, so if we stay across the water and we go to Calais, yep. if the jungle, so to speak, was full of... everybody in that jungle was a cancer specialist, would you let them all in? Well, look, you know, the whole point about immigration and asylum policy and, and the UKIP point is you can't actually have your own policy and remain part of a European Union. So there's a big choice facing this country. As far as the jungle itself is concerned, uh, look, you know, I, if these people are claiming refugee status, then the rules of the game that have been there since 1951 are that you claim refugee status in the first safe country you come to. So by definition, they shouldn't be coming from Calais to Britain. And we get all this talk, well, the British government needs to work with the French government on this. No, the British government needs to stand up to the French government and say we're not going to accept people claiming refugee status if they come into us from Calais, but we just don't do it. And, and the fact they broke the camp up yesterday frankly makes no difference at all. And the other big issue is there is this perception, this global perception, that Britain is a great place to come because we're a soft touch. And when you think the last Conservative government back in the 90s and under this Labour government, what we have for illegal immigrants are a never-ending series of, of amnesties where we say, well, it doesn't actually matter. And, you know, what signal does that send to the rest of the world? So I think we need to say there are going to be no more amnesties. I think we need to say let's take back control over who we want here. And when it comes to cancer specialists and when it comes to uh, entrepreneurs and business people, look, I'm very happy. I want great people to come to Britain. I mean, isn't this the policy upon which Australia has built herself? I can't go to Australia unless I've got something to give. That makes sense for Australia, and it's the kind of thing we should be doing too. So here we are in Stamford of Hope in Essex. Um, a lot of hard grassroots work being done here, and they are obviously planning in the next in May the sixth in the council elections to have a full slate of candidates. How do you, you know, and going to the general election, how are you going to convert the great success you've had in Europe into into local and? When people vote for us in the European elections, and, and you know, boy, we did ever so well in this area uh, just a few months ago, under proportional representation, they know it's not a wasted vote. Under first past the post, the worry is if I vote for UKIP, are they going to win? Are they strong enough to actually win? And if we do vote for them, will the fact we voted for them let somebody else in? that we'd rather not see. And they've been the big problems for us, you know, under, under, under first past the post, both at council level and at general election level. It's about having the perception of being a winner. And one of the reasons I'm here is just a few miles down the road uh, in Billericay, there is a town council election taking place tomorrow. Um, and, you know, if we start winning a few of those, 
and we recently had a big win in Cambridgeshire in a county council seat. Once you start to win a few, people say, crikey, they've got half a chance. And if they think you've got half a chance, you have. So that's really what it's about. We've got to change people's perceptions, and we've got to say to people, look, these issues that you voted for us on in the European elections are just as pertinent and just as relevant to local and general elections.